Greetings everyone, this is Noren Expert here, back again with another video and today we'll be solving problem number 9 from Daily Coding Problem. Now, the difficulty it's been rated at is hard and it was asked by Airbnb. Again, you don't really need to get scared if it's a hard problem or an easy problem. I mean, you know, you don't need to get scared. These things are just relative. And most hard problems have an easy solution as well. All right, so let's get down to the problem statement. So it's stated that given a list of integers, write a function that returns the largest sum of non-adjacent numbers. Numbers can be zero or negative. So by non-adjacent numbers, what we mean is we can select the first element, right? But we cannot select the second element. We can take the third element and we can consider it from there on forward. But the thing that we need to notice that we cannot, if we select an element, we cannot select the next element or the previous element. So if you take this example here, uh, which is a list of integers, which is 2, 4, 6, 2, 5, we should return 13. And the reason why we're getting 13 and not just the entire sum is just because of this condition that we need to find the largest sum of non-adjacent numbers. And if we select 2 over here, we cannot select 4. Right, so we select two, then we are we can select six, and then we select five. So that entire sum comes out to be thirteen. Again, if you did not understand what we just did, basically just look at the first element that you selected. After you selected that element, you cannot select the next element out of it. Right, so we cannot select four; it's not allowed. But we can select six, so we will add up six, and then we'll move forward from there. One way that we can solve this entire problem is by basically maintaining two variables where we can say that if I have selected 2 and 6, right, the sum comes out to be 8. I'll also keep one more counter which will basically be just checking, you know, um, what is the second value which we're comparing against. So we can do 4, comma 2, uh, which would basically be 6. So, you, you know, 8 would be the maximum sum over here. So we, we would have selected 8. Uh, but there is a huge problem here, right? That's not the way we can do this. Uh, the problem over here is actually stated in the next example. So in the next example, as you can see, we have 5, 1, 1, 5, right? So as you can see here, this should return 10, where we have selected 5 and 5. So we're following the property that's not adjacent numbers. So we can select 5. And selecting 5, we can select whatever number which is there after it, right? after one so that's the way it needs to be solved this is basically a dynamic programming question um but we can solve it in a different way as well uh, and we're going to be going with a simpler more understandable approach for now um unfortunately we were not able to find a lead code or a hacker rank or you know i checked online everywhere and i wasn't able to find an online editor which had a similar question um, I'm really sorry about that guys uh, and if you do find something which is similar to this do ping it in the comments below and we'll try solving it on the editor as well uh, but since we could not find uh, an online editor and we still have to solve this problem I have used uh, REPL if you're not familiar with what REPL is it's basically an online editor which where you can share your code and you know go forward from there so Obviously, I, I have tried to cover as many test cases which are sort of coming to my mind. So you can see there's a list of test cases and we're just running them. So you don't really need to worry about all these things. Um, again, just go on the description of, and there will be a link of, for Ripple and just open it and try solving it from there. I've already shared it over there. Um, <clears throat> and you don't really need to worry about it. You just need to run it and you can see if I run it. Uh, this particular function is getting called and all it's doing is just passing the value so it should basically return an assertion error which is doing it's saying assertion has been failed uh, when you have passed in 2 comma 4 comma 6 comma 8 where the expected value was 12 but the actual value which was returned was none right um, so you don't really need to worry about this portion um, you can look at it if you want um, but it's not really relative to this problem uh again i'm sorry about this but we'll have to go about it from here uh all right so let's just get down to the problem right so before we start we need to understand like 
what is the way in which we can sort of go about solving this problem right right so um, the way we're going to solve this is basically by maintaining two variables right uh, and the way we're sort of going to maintain those two variables it's basically going to help us understand whether we are excluding the value or including a particular value so the algorithm which we're going to go with is basically we're going to loop through all the elements in the array and while maintaining these two variables, we'll be understanding what's the maximum sum when we include a particular element and when we exclude a particular element, right? And while doing so also, what we'll make sure is, is that the exclude value is the excluded value, right? So it's not considering the element which we've already got on which we are iterating on, right? Um, it's easier to explain by code, so let's go down to the code. Um, all we'll start with is by saying include equal to zero and exclude, which is also equal to zero. So these are the two variables which we're going to maintain, right? Uh, obviously, include is going to include the sum, right? When you've considered the element while you're iterating it, right? And then we're going to go forward from there. So let's do a quick iteration for element and numbers. Right, and all we're going to do is um, because we need to also calculate uh, what the you know new sum which we've just calculated out is. We'll just say let's just create a temp variable, and a temp variable is just going to understand what is the maximum value between exclude and include. Right, so its only job is to understand which one is the max. Right, and the reason why we're maintaining this particular guy is just because. Uh, when we sort of you know use our uh, when we so, when we're sort of done with our iteration or when we're sort of done with one iteration at the end of it we need to update or exclude as well right and that's the only reason why we maintain this time to know what was the maximum right and that's it and that's it right so um, now what we want to do is uh, we need to update the include and what was the include the include was basically whatever value we had got so far right or whatever the sum was we had gotten so far plus the element right but what do we plus it with what do we add it with that's the question here the, the answer to this particular question is basically that we need to add it with exclude and the reason why we are adding it with the exclude it's basically helping us understand it's basically doing a swap right so when we sort of take include for the first time that include will become exclude and then we're going to move on from there. So if you do exclude here and then sort of update or exclude, which we had already, this entire swapping process will sort of take place. Okay. So let's take a quick example. Let's do 2, 4, 6, sorry, 6, ugh, 6, what am I doing? 6, 8, awesome. Okay. Let's do a quick dry run on this. Actually, before we do a dry run, let's just um, uh, you know, just comment this guy out so that I can just write a few print statements. So it's easier for us, uh, right? And this is not the end of the problem, right? Um, I hope you understand this. That we have not sort of finished with the problem. Still, you know, going ahead with it. Um, there's still one more condition that we need to handle. Uh, but the only reason I'm sort of writing prints over here is so that we understand like what was the temp, what was the exclude, what was the include, um, and basically understanding that, you know, what has been swapped, what has not been swapped, and then basically we're going to move forward from there. Okay, so let's just run this real quick. Hopefully we should get a few prints out, and we do. Cool, awesome. So as you can see here, the first iteration is, okay, it's 0, 0, that's understood, and when we sort of encounter 2, what's happening is, is that this is the exclude. The first value is the excluded value and the second value is the included value. So we included two and the maximum sum which we gained was two, right? Now, when we sort of went back to the next iteration and we sort of, you know, did our swaps, what's happening is that exclude basically got two. So this two over here came over here, right? And the include now basically has four. Right, because we, we are at the fourth element and we've done an iteration on it and zero plus four is four. So basically we got four here. 
So while we're doing this entire operation, right? Whenever we're doing this sequence of operations, all it's doing is just keeps on swapping out the elements, right? So exclude and include are basically um, understanding, you know, what they are at, and they're basically helping us maintain those two variables. And since they are basically swapping at the same time after doing an addition, that sort of helps us maintain uh, non-adjacency as well. Um, so if you take an example of five comma one comma one comma five, and because it might be a little difficult for you, you to understand, let's just put print here, right? Um, and let's just run this one more time. Hopefully, should run. Yeah, cool. So include over here is five. That's it's obvious. Uh, now the included value becomes the excluded value, right? So it's excluded now, so it becomes five, and the included value is basically swapped by the excluded plus the one. So zero plus one is one. So that's the value here, right? And when we do our next swapping, right? Because what's happened here is that we have come over here on the third element, right? What's the maximum that we have outputted till now? As you know, the maximum that we've outputted till now is five, right? So that needs to be our excluded value, right? So it's basically saying that if I consider these two, I mean, basically what's the maximum which I've been like enclosed till now before, before the third element, right? Um, and that's, that entire sum was five, right? As we have computed over here. So we are not gonna swap out that value. We still need that value because that's the maximum value that we have attained till now, right? And we also have this included value. So we're doing five plus one and that's six, right? So basically what's happening here is that, you know, you're saying that when this five sort of comes up, it says that, you know, what's the value? What's the maximum value that we've gained here so far? And that's six. And it says that, okay, skip this previous guy and just take the other values before it, right? And that's six, uh, sorry, that's five. As you remember, it was five, it was five over here, right? So the maximum value which was obtained was five. So when we do five plus five, that's 10. And that's the value that we sort of need. So all we need to do at the very end is basically do a return and say whatever the maximum was between exclude and include, that's the value which needs to be returned. Right. Um, let's just try running these. Let's comment out the things that we commented out. Hopefully it should run. Oh, I missed out a print. All right, cool. Um, and we'll sort of put a print and write success. Right. Um, just run one more time. Let's see if we get, I think it's five successes or yeah, six successes. All right, cool. So um, this seems to be working fine. And this is the way to sort of go about this approach. It's pretty simplistic if you sort of get the hang of how you're sort of using those two variables and that's it. And the hint which was sort of given to us was in the follow-up. When the follow-up said that, you know, it needs to be done of n time and constant space, it sort of told you that, you know, you can do this through dynamic programming, but dynamic programming is not the way to do it. You know, that's another approach. It's just going to complicate things. What you can do is you can use constant space and constant space basically does not tell you to not use any more variables but it tells you that hey you can use whatever you want right you can use an extra variable but not arrays or anything which goes on o of n right anything apart from that is constant space so that's all we're doing here i hope this problem was pretty easy for you to understand um if it was not please let me know in the comments below and i would love to come back to you and explain it again this is one of my famous problems. I, I love this problem because it's it's all about the presence of mind. And if you sort of solve this once, you can solve it over and over again because it's a pretty unique problem, as you can see. Again, um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you've not already subscribed to this channel, please do so. We are pushing out videos daily um, and it's gonna help you out as well. And if you did like this video, do give a like and also, if you've subscribed, you're awesome. We all know it and have a great day. Thank you.